So yeah, I think the earliest memory of me being interested in making things in that space, I think I, I, I remember this moment, the earliest moment of me, really young, working with the wet dirt outside, it's rainy day in the soil. So I'm making mud bowl. So I'm just literally just grabbing the, after rainy day, grab some mud and just making the mud bowl. So that was really a space, is that a space really loving it and, and also just enjoy working with um, water that is free. So it's whatever, whatever is available. So the puddle is a big part of uh, my childhood is we didn't have much of toy. Um, so that's early on and, and I love drawing uh, and obviously that is sort of um, as growing up in, in um, tradition, more or less a, a, a more traditional family uh, sort of speak that um, as a child we don't really allowed to talk very much um, and particular being girls that definitely you know just be quiet so although I disagree with my parents all the time um, but we just have to be quiet so I think that just the act of making things drawing and do things on your own and able to draw whatever um, we want you know that is to become an outlet for expression so I think that huge part of me being an artist actually is that able to just kind of have an outlet to, to do that, that space. Yeah, so Taiwan, it's uh, interesting, seems like uh, so long ago, uh, but it definitely um, is, my, rem my memory is people are living in very close proximity and, and often my memory of, of being in Taiwan is people everywhere on like public transportation. And I think one of the image come to mind is when I was five or six um, and my family are, you know, taking the bus and public transportation is huge because uh, you know, so many people and, and really grateful to have that. But when you go to the bus station, it just packed. Uh, and in order for me to not, not get lost in the, the people are, twice of size of my me you know, was five. So my father had to hold my hand to make sure that I don't get lost in the sea or people in the bus station. And so, um, but I remember one time that maybe it's me, I sneak away or, or was curious about looking at something. I, I just kind of let go of my hand with my father's hand. So, and I just really freaked out and, and just cry. And that's not, that's not unique at all. It, it's probably happened more than one time. And so just the, the personal space become not exists. Uh, and often if you go to any public spaces, if in a, you know, elevator, even in a hospital, it, it's jam packed. It's like sardine and, and people just need to get up. So you just like make space. And I think that my work definitely is strongly impacted by upbringing, by being a, a very shy, very introvert person, that um, having constantly have no space for my own to, to be myself and, and to, um, of your own space to, to just kind of, um, that is a huge influence um, in my work, just kind of constantly searching for that physical, psychological space. So my earlier work really is more on the, abstract expressionist kind of uh, work that I was starting doing in Taiwan before I go to art school. So I really was looking for that space to, to express. So it's really sort of very expressive, very explosive sort of space, gestural, mark making. And so I become, uh, slowly I came to the United States, I start responding to my environment, my, my sense of um, out of placeness and this idea between two different cultures that I have to struggle with. I don't necessarily, um, I don't feel like I belong to either one as if when I was in Taiwan, I feel don't quite fit in. And obviously when I come here, came here, um, I also don't feel it's my place. I'm a visitor, I'm a foreigner and uh, language was completely different. It's, it's, big learning curve. So my work become uh, performative uh, and it's really about um, creating performance pieces to question my identity and, and uh, uh, sh share my 
sort of in between us kind of experience in my work, um, particularly through performance art. Meanwhile, I was working with installation that was continuing, continuing carving up that space for myself, feel like, oh, I can put myself in there and I feel safe, like in the forest just full of tree, um, in figurative speaking. Uh, so it's all very abstract. Uh, and so um, when I was doing two dimensional work, uh, like painting, drawing, I really have a problem with this idea of frame, framing it, because uh, I'm working on the piece and I feel like the complete self. And meanwhile, you need to frame it and the frame are so expensive that, so I create words that do not require framing. So I was anti-frame. I figured a way to create my work that can exist without framing. Meanwhile, um, recent work that I starting to thinking about this body of work that I want to create this sort of fuzziness. So that those sort of um, focusedness in the work uh, need to have some area of focus in order to see, to kind of give a frame of reference, literally frame of reference of focus and unfocus, uh, the fuzziness and clarity. So uh, this body of word liminal, um, the, the frame literally is part of the work and need to have the, the clarity and of the frame, physicality to, to see the sense of uh, contrast of, of what is focused, what is not focused. So I had to experience with many different kind of transparency make note on each one. So that's sort of how I started this kind of different tracing paper, vellum, and um, different thing and make note. Then I move into the plexiglass. Um, so those are different um, sources that to kind of see different transparency and all numbered. Um, and so, so this is just a really interesting process to kind of seeing uh, what works, and so it's definitely very um, time-consuming, uh, and and it have to working with thicknesses of the epoxy glass, and also different sort of diffusion of the light and texture. So this take a while, but I think that ex exactly this kind of process really intrigued me, and definitely have it have perfect combination of of color to, to make it look right. So for example, this is um, uh, the epoxy glass, that, the chosen one. And, and so definitely working with distance and a, a different color to, to working with uh, together to create that, that same kind, the, the exact effect that uh, I needed. So definitely distance uh, to the paper um, and thicknesses of this. As far as color goes, um, I'm specific looking for color that have that sense of energy. So, so in a way that sometimes it would might be starting with color actually really hard to even look at. Like uh, could be forms of yellow or forms of orange. Um, that when you look at little on the paper, um, it's just like impossible to even look at. And but when you have a epoxy glass, uh, uh, fuzzy epoxy glass on top it creates this um, glowing uh, quality in there without hurting your eye, but still have that glowing quality that I really want the pieces to sort of have a sense of energy. So like even they are not literally glow glowing, but it's definitely feel light. Uh, so for this body of work, I really thinking about um, something is not challenging to your eye and make you feel like not want to look at something ease on your eye, but yet you feel a sense of warmth. Um, and um, so that's some of the choice, decision making is that either something really um, brings you some joy or it brings you some color, uh, comfort um, or some energy. I think that recently I'm very much interested in that um, this particular yellow that just created that sunshine feeling and I think part of it because of winter. So, so I think that the color just brings joy and light. Yeah, definitely. I personally value those things, the space, quietness, um, that, that, um, that I think we all need, uh, cause I think that the world is full of a lot of information and 
objects, space, and things that I just feel like uh, I want to give the space back to the audience. So, so when people come see the work, hopefully I'm not, not asking for like, look at me, look at me, or, or uh, you know, it's more like, oh, I'm entering this um, liminal space that this space, this piece are offering me to go somewhere else. And that is serving some purpose that is hopefully is positive in some way.